All right. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for coming. I know we got some new people, so I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, basically, the format here is super straightforward. I do a little teaching, and then the ministry team will go around and offer prayer, right? If you guys are struggling with anything or you just want to get some prayer. Um, so let's open in prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get into it. All right, Lord, I want to thank you right now for every person that's here. I pray that if there's anybody on their way, that they would make it quickly. And uh, I thank you for blessing this message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, guys. So the message today, <clears throat> it's not so much about women as it is the purpose that people have, right? But I thought it was interesting to go ahead and use women as an example because a lot of the time, I think we talk a lot about the men in the Bible and, and what happens with them, but sometimes the women kind of get left out a little bit. So I figured I'd just use this as a way to say, hey, everybody has a purpose, everybody has a destiny, and God put it inside of you specifically, and it's meant for you to fulfill. So like for you two in the back here, God has something very specific inside of you, and he wants to fulfill that purpose, right? And you don't know what that is. It could be something, you know, Jesus, what his ministry was like 30 years, something like that, right? So it could be something like that, or it could be a moment of time that you're being used for something very specific. So that's what this is going to be about. Can everybody see the screen? Yeah? Okay, great. So this says women in the Bible who had a purpose, who were not perfect, I think that's important, who God had a plan for, and who were obedient. Maybe not perfectly obedient, but they still fulfilled their purpose. The first woman in the Bible that we ever encounter is Eve, right? Now, she was not perfect. How do we know that Eve was not perfect? Because she ate the fruit of life and death. That's right. Great job. That's right. She ate the apple. She wasn't supposed to, right? And so she disobeyed God in the garden with her husband, Adam, and brought sin into the world. Whoops. And that's why we see all the stuff that we see today, right? It all stemmed all the way back up to Adam and Eve. But what did God do? He promised to crush the serpent's head through her offspring because she was the mother of all of the living, right? Through her, everybody was created, including Jesus, right? So God fulfilled his promise when Jesus came and crushed Satan's head. When he died on the cross, it literally gave us authority as the church to overcome all the works of the devil, right? So he fulfilled that through Eve, which is pretty cool. And I put a verse down here. It says, the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So we know that's true because that came straight out of the scripture. And then what I wove into here is some fun little videos, which I like to do that are easy to understand about Adam and Eve or whoever we go over. Okay, so let's check it out with sound. Eve's stand. This is Adam. Hey. And this is Eve. Right. Who were the first people on earth. They lived in the Garden of Eden, which was a beautiful place that had everything they needed. Adam and Eve took care of the animals and could eat from any of the trees in the garden, except for one. This was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and God told them not to eat from this tree. There were lots of animals in the garden, but the serpent was the most clever of all the wild animals God had made. One day, he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of these trees in the garden? <laughs> no. Eve said that they were able to eat from all of the fruit trees except the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. For God said, you must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. No, that can't be. You won't die, said the serpent. God knows that as soon as you eat it, you will be Can you guys like see? God, Can you both see? Good and evil. Can you see? The woman was Can convinced. You see? Yeah. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. 
So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to Adam and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open. Oh no! And they suddenly realized they weren't wearing clothes and were embarrassed. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, Adam and Eve heard God walking about in the garden. Hey! So they hid from God among the trees. Then God called to Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? Adam said, it was the woman who gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then God asked Eve, what have you done? The serpent tricked me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then God punished the serpent by making it so he would crawl on his belly from then on. He told Eve that she would have great pain in her life. Then God said to Adam that because he listened to Eve and did not obey what God had told him to do, his life would be very difficult. He would have to work hard to get food to eat, God said, for you were made from dust and to dust you will return. Then God made them clothing from the animals. But God knew that Adam and Eve could no longer live in the garden because of their sin. So he sent them away and closed up the garden. Okay, guys, we'll stop there for a minute. Welcome, everybody. It's a whole bunch of you that came in. Thanks for coming. All right, so what we're talking about today is women in the Bible that were used for a purpose. Okay? Everybody has a purpose, but we don't often talk about the women in the Bible who had one as well, right? So that's what we're going through. We just talked about Eve and how even though she disobeyed, God still used her, right, through having all these children. Eventually, through that bloodline, Jesus came about, right? And we defeated the devil through what Jesus did on the cross, okay? So now we're going to move on to Mary. Who's Mary? Anybody? Remember Mary and Joseph? Yes. Who was Mary? She was the... You got it. What is it? Jesus' mother. There you go. That's what you were going to say, right? Yeah, you got it right. Okay. She's the Messiah's mother. There you go. Exactly. Good job. All right. Why Mary? The Bible said that she was highly favored. Okay. So she was probably... Doing things pretty well, okay? So she's highly favored. She's chosen to give birth to Jesus, but she was still a simple human who needed a savior. She wasn't perfect, okay? That's super important to know. If we say we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's 1 John 1, 8. So it wasn't that Mary was perfect. It's that she was chosen and God saw her and favored her life, right? So we can be obedient to God. We may not be perfect, but she had a heart for God, obviously. Okay. And it says, and having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. That's pretty cool that she got chosen. And you know that according to scholars, they believe that Mary was about 17 years old when she had Jesus. So she was young. She wasn't an older person. She was still considered a teenager. Okay, so when you have a purpose, it might get fulfilled when you're young. It might get fulfilled when you're older. We don't know, right? The big thing is to stay in line with Jesus and wanting what God wants for us so we can fulfill our purpose. So let's take a look at Mary. The story of Christmas, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> this is Mary. You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary had no children because she lived according to God's law and had never been married. But she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey One day, an angel came to Mary and said, 
God had chosen Mary, the angel said, God is with you. But Mary was afraid and confused. She wondered what the angel was talking about. Then the angel said, don't be afraid. God loves you and wants to use you in a great way. You will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and he will be the king forever. Mary asked, but how can this happen? For she was not married yet and knew that she couldn't have a child until she was married. But the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. Wow! So that the baby born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Wow! The angel reminded her that nothing is impossible with God. Eh, okay, let's do it! So Mary decided to trust God and all that he had planned for her. Before their wedding, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Wait, what? He thought she had done something wrong. Uh -huh. But Joseph was a man of God and decided to break off the engagement quite so no one around town would think badly of Mary. While Joseph was thinking about all this, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Oh, uh, hi? The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Uh, what? The angel explained that Mary's baby was from God. Wait, what? The angel told Joseph that the baby's name would be Jesus, and he would save his people from their sins. Oh, wow. Uh. And when Joseph woke up, he did it. The angel told him. Um, hi. You ready? Really? Yeah! And took Mary as his wife while she was still pregnant with the Son of God. And so Joseph and Mary trusted in God, and the two followed the plan that God had given them to help bring the Savior into the world. Okay, pretty cool, right? They decided to trust God. That'd be kind of hard, don't you think? How was she going to get pregnant? You know, and then her husband's like, how are you pregnant? We're not even married yet. But they decided to trust God. And you know what's interesting? God confirmed that it was him. They didn't have to guess. They didn't have to, you know, oh, I don't know, I don't know. No, God confirmed it, right? So we know he'll confirm our destinies for us as well. Okay, the next person we have is Hannah. Who knows who Hannah was? Anybody? You do? Who was Hannah? Uh, Hannah, she was, um, she was the one who couldn't have kids, and she was praying, and then I think the pastor came to her and thought she was drunk or something. Yeah. And then uh, she explained to him, like, why she was there crying. Exactly. And then what happened? And then after that, um, I think she prayed for her. And then um, I think she was still sad, but then God, like she made a promise to God. Yeah. To give um, her son to, back to God. That's right. Yeah. And then she got pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the kid's name? Okay. Daniel? You got it. I'll Nailed it. Yeah. Nice job. Okay, yeah, so Hannah prayed to God for a baby because she couldn't get pregnant. She couldn't have kids. How many of you guys want kids? Yeah? You want kids? Maybe? Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you wanted to have kids and you couldn't, that would be pretty sad. Would you be sad if you couldn't have kids and you wanted them? Yeah? Yeah, I would. Okay. But she kept believing and crying out to God, and he blessed her with a son named Samuel. Hannah promised God she'd give her son back to him and that he would serve him his whole life. And then it happens, right? And God uses Samuel as a judge, as a priest, as a prophet, as a military leader, and a kingmaker. He actually anointed King Saul, right? So this kid got used in a powerful way all through Hannah crying out to the Lord. So Hannah's purpose was somewhat fulfilled through her child. That's pretty cool. 
right? So it, it's not always straightforward, your purpose. Sometimes your purpose is weaved into somebody else's purpose. It's pretty awesome. So let's hear a little bit about Hannah. Slapstick theater. Hannah and God. This is Hannah. Hi. Hannah was married to a man named Alcana. Hey. But they were not able to have any children. This made Hannah sad. Aww. It's okay. Come on. Every year, Hannah and Elkanah would go to the house of the Lord at Shiloh to pray to God and offer sacrifices. Hannah would cry out and pray to the Lord. She told God that if he gave her a son, she would give him back to him and that her son would serve God all the days of his life. <laughs> Hannah was so upset that one of the priests, Eli, thought there was something off about her. But Hannah told him that she had been praying because she had a broken heart. <laughs> Eli told her, may the God of Israel grant the request you've made. Thank you. And then Hannah was no longer sad. In due time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Yeah! She named him Samuel for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Hannah did as she said she would, and once Samuel was a little older, she took him to the temple. Hannah prayed and gave thanks to God, and Samuel grew up in the temple serving the Lord. So what else is interesting about that is Hannah kept her promise, right? She could have told God, hey, I'll give you my son and he'll grow up and serve you. But she could have held him back and she didn't. Right. So when she told God, God, I want this from you and I'm going to turn my son over to you and he's going to serve you. She actually did it. Now, that might have been hard too. imagine if you had like a five year old son that you'd raised and then you went and you took him and you dropped him off to be raised basically in the church. Right. That would be a little bit difficult, but she did it. And a lot of good things came out of that, her obedience. Okay, Esther. Who knows about Esther? What do you know about Esther? Um, she, she was a queen. Yep, she was a queen. Who did she save? Who did she help save? Mordecai. Yes, that is true. And then the whole Jewish people, right? Everybody. Okay, so Esther, she was chosen to save the Jewish people. She was known for her bravery, her faith, her courage, and she risked her life for the people. She was a Jewish orphan, and then she became a Persian queen. So it doesn't matter what your circumstances are now. You could be a kid in foster care, and you could end up running a country. It doesn't matter. When God has a plan for you, he's going to do it, right? As long as you're obedient to him. So Mordecai, who was her uncle, he had said this. He was telling Esther basically like, hey, I need you to go talk to the king because this guy, this evil guy has a plan to kill us. And in that time, if the king didn't call you to come to him and you went to him on your own, you'd be killed if he didn't accept you coming. So she was taking a risk of her life by going before the king without him calling her. Make sense? Okay. So let's see what happened with Esther. Slapstick theater. Esther's request to the king. This is Esther, who was a Jewish orphan who lived in Persia during the reign of King Xerxes. Esther was adopted by her relative, Mordecai. Hey. who worked in the palace of the king. Once, Mordecai had even saved the king's life. Yeah. Esther became the queen of Persia, but no one knew she was a Jew because Mordecai told her to keep it a secret. This is Haman, yeah. who was the second most powerful man in Persia. Yeah. 
Haman hated Mordecai because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him. So Haman convinced King Xerxes to make a decree to kill all Mordecai's people, the Jews. When Mordecai learned about this, he was very upset, as were all the Jews in Persia. When Queen Esther's servants came and told her about how upset Mordecai was, she sent one of her servants, Hatak, to go to Mordecai and find out what was troubling him. So Hatak went out to Mordecai, and Mordecai told him of the plan to kill God's people. Mordecai said that he wanted Esther to go to the king to ask for him to save the Jews. Esther knew that anyone who went to the king without being called could be put to death. Esther that she may have been made queen for such a time as this. So Esther asked for the Jews to pray for her and fast for three days. Then Esther put on her royal robes and went before the king. When the king saw Esther, he was happy to see her and asked, What do you want, Queen Esther? I will give it to you, even if it's half the kingdom. So Esther asked the king if he and Haman would come to a banquet that she had prepared for them and the king agreed. Esther held a banquet and then asked the king and Haman to come to a second banquet the next night. That night, the king was reminded of how Mordecai had once saved his life. King Xerxes decided that he must honor Mordecai and that Haman would help. Then at the second banquet, Esther told the king about the plot against her people. The king was angry and asked, who would do such a thing? Esther said it was Haman, and the king ordered Haman to be killed on that very night. Uh -oh. But the decree to kill all the Jews was still in place, and the Jews were still in danger. So Mordecai asked the king to issue a new decree so that the Jews could defend themselves. The king did, and the Jews defeated all their enemies. God's people were saved and celebrated their great victory. Pretty cool, huh? So she had a lot of faith to be able to do that, and it all turned out. And also, what's interesting is she wasn't made queen just so that she could enjoy being a queen. She actually had a purpose in becoming a queen. Now, I'm sure she enjoyed some benefits of being that, right, in her own self, but God actually used that for his purpose. It wasn't just for her own enjoyment. Sarah. Who knows about Sarah and Abraham? Nobody? Sarah, see, God promised that she would have a son even though she was too old. She was 90 when she had her son Isaac. And then Abraham became the father of many descendants just like God had told him. So he was promised that he would have descendants and um, children basically that would outnumber the sand of the sea, you know? So that happened through Sarah, right? And the scripture says, I promise that you'll be the father of many nations. So now I'm changing your name from Abraham, Abram, sorry, to Abraham. I'll give you a lot of descendants and they will become great nations. Some of them will even be kings. Now it's funny because Sarah, when she found out that she was gonna have a baby, she actually laughed, like inside of herself. She thought, mm, yeah, right, that's not possible, right? But eventually it all worked out. This is the last one we'll do, guys, and then we'll wrap it up and have some prayer, okay? Stories of the Bible. God's promise for Abraham. This is Abram, who later will be known as Abraham. When Abram was in the land called Canaan, God told him to look over the land as far as his eyes could see. God promised that the land would be blessed and that Abram would have many children. Oh. 25 years passed. Abram and Sarai were very old and still had no children. God appeared to Abram and said, Do not be afraid. I am your shield. A son is coming. Look at the heavens and count the stars. Someday you will have as many children as there are stars in the sky. Years later, Abraham and Sarai still had no children. God appeared to Abram again and told Abram, 
that his name would no longer be Abram, but it would be Abraham, which means father of many nations. Ah. God also told Abraham that Sarai's name would be changed to Sarah. God promised to bless Sarah and told Abraham that she would become pregnant and have a son. Ah. God made a covenant with Abraham and God gave Abraham a way to show that he and his children were part of God's covenant. Abraham and Sarah did have a son named Isaac. God's promises came true for Abraham and Sarah. Abraham became the father of many nations, and from his child came children, and from their children, more children, until Abraham's descendants were truly more numerous than the stars in the sky, just as the Lord had promised. Something interesting about that is out of Isaac's line, eventually way down the line came Jesus. See, so they were weaved into that plan as well for Christ. Had they never had Isaac, that line wouldn't have been completed and had Jesus in it. So you never know. Yeah. Say that again. Did Abraham raise King Saul? Did he raise King Saul? I don't think so. Well, I saw King Saul's picture. You did? Okay. Well, we can talk about King Saul later, okay? I have some fun facts about King Saul. Okay? All right, guys. So the point of this is everybody has a purpose and a destiny. God has something inside of you that's special that he wants you to fulfill. He has a plan he wants you to fulfill. Your life is not just for you to have fun and play video games and run around, even though you might think it is, okay? He actually has something he wants you to do. And we don't know when that's going to be. So we want to make sure that we're right with God and that we're being obedient to God so that when that time comes, we're ready, right? So that we can fulfill our purpose. Any questions or comments on that? Which one? Um, like the, like, um, the one like, uh, It's okay, I'll remind you later, okay? Um. Alright guys, so I'm going to have the ministry team walk around and we're going to pray for you guys, okay? <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Uh, ministry team, if you guys want to go around and talk to the parents and the kids, that would be great. <laughs>